Okay, today I thought we would do the eyes, but before we do that, I'm going to have to sharpen my sharpen my blade because it's getting it's reached its limit. I've uh, buffed it off another enough, enough times to where there's just nothing left above. So there's no way you can sharpen these. So. Take this out of here. If you notice what I've done here is I've taken some plumber's putty, some of that uh, two-part plumber's putty. You, know, you pinch off a little bit and you roll it in your hands. And uh, I filled in the area back behind where that blade goes. There used to be two two little nubs up here instead of that one right there. I cut ground the one off filled that in with putty and then placed my blade in here like that. That locks that blade solid and it also moves it out about an eighth of an inch farther than it normally would be to give me that much more cutting room, cutting area. And then just put that on there, squeeze it down and uh, it'll get hard, pinch your finger. Make sure makes this carving knife even better. Okay, now let's look at this blade a minute. Now you can see here, I hope, where I've buffed it right there. And you can see down here on this end that hadn't been used yet. So what I do is I just turn this sucker around, slip it back in there like that. Put my knife back together. back down. Kind of hard to do when I got my thumb guard on there. Tighten her down there like that. And I'm going to take it over to the buffing wheel and sharpen it up even more because there's a factory edge on here you know they, they don't really strop these blades that much they're sharp but they're not really sharp so what we're going to do is make it really sharp okay over here at my buffing area I've got my leather strop on this one this is just one of those paper sharpening wheels but I put a piece of leather around it this is an old hard cloth wheel and uh, what I do is I use some black diamond. Let me turn this on here. That's some black diamond on there. Don't need very much. Laying my blade almost flat. Just run it across there a couple of times. Okay, when you get down to doing uh, when you get down to doing uh, fine details on the face, you want an extremely sharp knife, and especially one that has a very narrow point on it, and that has a, about as narrow a point on it as you can get. You look at these other knives, and I'm not criticizing these; they're meant for different things. The blade is uh, just a little too thick to do the real fine stuff that I like to do and it doesn't have much flex in it. See how it's got a little flex but not very much. But this blade has a lot of flex which is what I really like. So uh, 
always make sure before I start doing fine facial details, my knife is, knife is as sharp as it can get. And uh, anytime I see my knife, you know, making scuff cuts to where the surface is not really smooth, I'll go over there and sharpen it. And I notice right now, I've got a little burr in my knife blade right there. See it? Hopefully you can see it. That's caused by there's a little nick in this knife blade. Now I'm going to go try to polish that out of there. And uh, I mean, I could get by with doing what I'm going to do. Let's just see where that burr is. It's farther back on, on the uh, blade. See, there it is there. But look at these two different cuts. See the different texture? See how it's, this one's darker than this one here? That's because this cut was made with a sharp knife, but it wasn't really sharp. This is made by this one, even though it has a nick in it. It's sharper than that one over there. So let me go buff this up a little bit more. Okay, I've got my knife buffed up some more. Let's see how it does now. Notice? No. No little ding in the blade. Probably what that was was, you know, it wasn't really a mark on the blade so much, at least I hope not, as it was just some residue stuck there that I didn't get off, just a little bit of a hair. Okay, back to this thing. All right, we want this guy to look kind of sinister, and I kind of lightly sketched the eyes I want in here. So here's, here's what we're after. Okay, so there, put his cigar back in his mouth. Here. So there, there's a lot of action in that face. He's not just looking straight ahead. All right. So here we go. Now, like I say, doing eyes is especially important. Use a real sharp knife. Okay. Remember, I always said to cut down at an angle. Well, this is one of those instances where I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go straight in, right back here at the back, and just make a cut right along that pencil line. Like that. And I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to cut up to that pencil line to take that chip out of there. But not go below that pencil line. Just like that. And I'm going to get rid of this pencil line. But it's kind of distracting. Okay. Now, coming from the other side, real lightly, come in there and follow that line around. with my knife blade and then come back and take that chip out Right here in the corner, right there, I want to take a little deep cut, right there, like that, because I want it to look like that eyeball disappears back in underneath those two eyelids, like that.
see that shadow? See that eye, that eye goes right back in underneath those eyelids, okay? Now, if possible, I'm going to try the same thing over here. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. Bring up my cuts. Now here, I want this lower lid to go up underneath this upper lid just a little bit. Just a little bit. So right there, I'm going to make a cut right there like that. Take a little of that material off there, it's a little too much. The reason I lay my knife and pull it away is I'm finding out which way that grain's going to run. Because I don't want to go taking a chip off now, especially, and having it. Split. See how that split there? You can see the different different cuts. See how this goes straight down? Yet these are nice and smooth. Now I have to come back and get rid of that line. Okay, so we got one eyelid done. Looks pretty good, don't it? Okay, now we come back over here to the other one, and it's basically the same thing. So I start back here. Just bring the knife right on down to the edge, yeah, like that. Take the chip out. Take a look at it. Pretty good. Look at that pencil line. And now the same thing over here, starting right there. Look at that one. Now you'll get a situation where, see so you got that center ridge there where the two chips match. What you want to do is come back if you can and take that out. So your eyes rounded a little better. Just like that. Now that one's a little wider. Here I want this to go up underneath there, so I'm going to cut that out right there. Now 
Now, if I take, let me get this cleaned up right here. Now if I take my knife blade, and what I'm going to do is right here, starting this corner, I'm going to loop it in here, like that. Right there at the point. And then just turn it up like that. See, that gives just a little, you can't see it there so much, just a little sort of loop right out there at the end. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here, it'll be more evident over here. Again, starting right there. Just take a little curve cut out of there. Like that, and dress it up a little. See, that's a little more evident there. Let me clean that up. Get that blemish right at, right at the corner of his eye back there. Okay, so now right here a little slack cut this is why you need that really sharp knife to do these things. Now, I'm not going to do that on the upper eyelid, I'm just going to do it on the lower eyelid. So again, Just curve that right up underneath his eye. Upper lid. Like that. Now we can finish out with some uh, brown lines here. Like that. And I always try to put one in the center coming from the opposite direction. Like that. I'll do the same thing over here. Well, I'd say that looks pretty good. Go 
back and clean up some ragged lines here. So there, we pretty well got the face finished. The only thing we have to do now is to uh, do the hair and then the head will be done. But let's just look at it for a second. Now in a human face, you've probably looked in the mirror and you'll find something in your face as you're looking there that's not exactly square. In other words, one side is just a little bit different the other side. I know I do. My mouth's crooked. And uh, I don't really notice it until someone takes my picture and then it just shows to me like crazy that my mouth's crooked. If you look at this guy, you can also see things that are different. See how lo much larger this plane is here than it is over here? Now, anatomically, that could be caused by him raising this eyebrow, is pulling this area tighter than this side over here, which is relaxed. So you got this upward motion over here and the downward motion over here. You'll see these things. Don't worry about that. You know, you can worry about it if it's so so evident that it really detracts from the look of your piece then you can correct it. But if it's small, don't worry about that because that's, that's natural. And to me, things like that give the, uh, the face, face, head, or body just that much more interest, more character. The ears might not be exactly the same you know, one might be a little bit higher, a little bit thinner, a little bit farther out. Believe me, I was criticized when I was a little boy because I had big ears. Well, as I got older, you know, your head grows fatter and the, your ears shrink. So finally, I've got ears that I'm not, you know, I'm not that concerned about. But then the older you get, also, the longer your earlobes get. <laughs> so it's, it's sometimes it's just a losing battle. So it's best just to relax and you know enjoy the time you have around around the place. Okay. So in the next, uh, sorry about my philosophizing, but uh, you got to put up with that with me doing these things. So in the next video, we're going to uh, do the hair and the mustache, and he'll be done. And then we'll start considering what to do with this this guy here. Okay. So until then, I'll talk to you later.